So two years ago, in July of 2020, I released a review of the AOP-01, which is a pistol made by Action Army. The review itself went very well. It's a very high quality, uh, covers a lot of topics considering the gun had just gone out. The gun went down very well. A lot of people seem to like it. I'm seeing it prop up everywhere. And it got to a point where uh, the company I own, Walder Customs, decided to make parts for it too. And uh, there's always a, a link in the description for our website where you can find those parts. But the problem is when you make a review of a gun and it's just come out, you can't really vouch for its durability. Uh, as everybody knows, the longer you use a gun, the more the parts wear down, and there's things like abnormal wear. It's very hard to test on a gun what it would be like to fall on it and uh, what it's actually like to use in game. And so that's really hard to get across in a review that you're trying to bring out quickly. So two years later, I thought it would be a good idea to review the gun tell you what's broken, what's changed, and what hasn't changed, and what I like about it so far. So here we have my uh, AAP-01 from uh, two years ago. As you can see, it's looking uh, very, very different lately, so uh, we're going to talk about um, how it's changed. Now, since that video two years ago, many parts for this gun have come out, and a lot of them feature here. But to my surprise, there's actually loads of parts out there for the AAP-01. It's very easy to customize it and make it look radically different. And I'm seeing lots of very unique builds lately, which is really surprising for a pistol that's only two years old. So uh, the parts I'm featuring, um, a lot of them actually do come from Action Army. They do make their own parts, but so do other companies, including myself. And uh, I think it was a, an actually a really healthy bandwagon to jump on. So if we start with the upper, we have uh, the Action Army Mamba Upper. This is a CNC metal upper. Um, it comes with uh, the complete upper bit here, some front and rear iron sights, a compensator on uh, the outer barrel, and there are actually threads here so that are 14 millimeter counterclockwise, so uh, you can put traces on. It comes with a built-in uh, wrist rail on the bottom and on the top, and that's where I've mounted a red dot and a torch, and I'll talk about them in a second. Um, if I'm totally honest, I think this is one of the best aesthetic upgrades you can get for the AAP-01. I think this is incredible value for money. Um, I come from a world of high cappers, and when you consider everything that comes with this upper, um, it should be very, very expensive. But in the AAP-01 world, uh, this is only £100, so that's roughly about $130. And I think that's actually really good value. Um, to get something like that in the high capper world, you would be looking much closer to maybe 180 pounds or more, uh, just because these parts cost more in the high capper world. And uh, I guess with the AAP, you do get it all built into one, like the outer barrel and the upper assembly are all sort of one piece, but it's still very much appreciated for the right price. And so that was something I got early. The stock plastic upper was perfectly fine, even if it was a bit, uh, you know, plastic, so it can be a bit brittle, but it was nice to have something like this. It adds a nice hefty weight to it, and it's starting to feel a bit more like a handgun now. If we then move to my red dot, we'll only do a quick thing on this. This is uh, the Vector Optics uh, Spirit, I believe, and it was just something I picked up secondhand. Uh, it hasn't failed me yet, it keeps zero, and it's super useful and nice to use. I'm a big believer of uh, red dots on pistols, and I find it to be uh, very accommodating for uh, this, this gun. Uh, when you have a a pistol with a bolt rather than a slide, it's good to abuse uh, mounting a red dot on it because it doesn't really affect the efficiency when it comes to an airsoft gun. If we then move here, I have my signature TLR1. Uh, I use this on all my pistols, I take it off and on for whatever gun I'm using. It's uh, an incredible torch and I actually think it really suits the look of the build uh, quite a lot. And so on the back here we have the TTI charging handle and this can also be used as a fire select. So you can pull it all the way back just like a standard charging handle. And it also has this little bump here. It's sort of like, almost like a gear stick. And what this allows you to do is to change between full auto and semi with just the flick of a thumb. So if you are holding it like this, you can easily just switch between the two modes, just like that. Uh, I think this is actually uh, an incredibly uh, smart and awesome part for the AAP world. Uh, I'm jealous I didn't make something like this sooner. I love these uh, sort of pull charging handles. They're super cool. They're very reminiscent of the real sort of Ruger uh, pistol in the real world. 
And it's also just very effective. It's well made and uh, it has a nice satisfying click. And with the same brand of TTI, I'm using uh, their adjustable trigger. This trigger can be adjusted so that uh, it uh, makes it shorter, so there's less travel. An issue with the original AAP was it had an incredibly long trigger pull. Um, it was a good, maybe a good four millimeters of slack before you actually got to the break. And uh, there was also over travel. However, the TTI trigger gets rid of all of this. If we take a closer look, if you look here, there is actually a hole that goes all the way through the trigger and can be seen from the inside of the gun when you take the upper off. This is a grub screw you can adjust and this allows the trigger to be adjusted backwards so it's closer to the break and the wall of uh, the firing action. Uh, this is actually super cool and uh, a very useful thing. But this has existed for a long time in uh, the Glock world. It exists for high caps as well, but this trigger actually does work in Glocks also. However, the thing that TTI did that was super unique was they added a very simple grub screw here at the bottom. So there's a little hole here that goes to a grub screw and you adjust this grub screw and it allows you to adjust the over travel of the trigger. What this grub screw allows for is that when you pull the trigger all the way back, uh, it stops against uh, the frame of the AAP and it's sort of like a nice uh, physical reminder that you are at the, the maximum pullback of the trigger and that you can release and go for the follow-up shot. And um, when you have so much travel, you end up pulling the trigger all the way back. And it's it's very like it's very minute amount of time wasted, um, but it's very appreciated to have that change. So overall, a fantastic little upgrade. We then have uh, the frame. Now uh, the frame I won't linger on too much because I've had some teething issues with it and I am uh, working on it. Uh, some people call this the frame or the grip. Uh, it could be either really, I guess it's both. The stock frame by uh, Action Army is very good. It's a nice material, it has decent stippling, but in terms of uh, things you can change on it, it's extremely limited. You can add a mag well and you can sort of add a thumb rest, but that's sort of it. I and I was looking for something a bit more authentic to the real uh, Ruger pistol. And that's when a company called CTM brought out this sort of 1911 style lower, which is very reminiscent of the real Ruger. It has these nice grip panels on each side and you can actually take these grip panels off and swap them with uh, real 1911 grip panels. I think that's super cool. Uh, I've got to say though, uh, that whilst this is a fantastic material and I like the design and uh, it looks excellent, uh, there were some teething issues. It seems that the material is quite thick on the inside of the, the frame, which means uh, slotting in your hammer group and all these other pieces up the front are extremely tight. Um, they took a lot of uh, pushing in and convincing. And then to also go with that, uh, the mags, um, uh, have quite a bit of resistance. I've actually had to sand down uh, the inside of um, my uh, magwell here to allow mags to go in a lot smoother and even still they actually don't drop out. Uh, they take a little bit of convincing. Uh, with the stock lower you could just uh, press the eject button and the magazine would fall out. Um, which uh, unfortunately can't be that said with uh, the CTM lower without some modification. Uh, it's clear that the tolerance is just maybe a tad too tight there, um, but uh, with some modding, it uh, is proving all good. Uh, I've got to say though, considering uh, all of the, that uh, issue that I've mentioned, uh, the lower is only 20 pounds, uh, which is probably close to something like around the $30 mark, probably less actually. And that's actually crazy value. Uh, it comes in all different colors. And for the sake of having to file down some parts to get the mags dropping smoothly, I think that's actually a very small cost uh, to pay. And it's sort of all part of uh, building a custom pistol. And next up, we'll just talk about the magazine quickly. So the eagle-eyed among you will notice that this is actually a wee Glock mag for their G17. And uh, the reason for this is uh, they actually work just as well in the Action Army as uh, the stock Action Army mags, except they're a lot cheaper. Um, so I bought a, a few of those over the Action Army mag. The only uh, major difference is they're uh, not uh, left-handed compatible. And what I mean by that is the Action Army mag has a cut here, which um, allows for you to change the uh, mag release to be ambidextrous. Whereas with the Wii mag, it, is only, uh, it can only be used with a right-handed uh, ejection uh, 
release. So uh, just something to think about. These mags are a ton cheaper. I think I can pick them up for about 17 to 18 pounds and Action Army mags are closer to 30. So it's uh, it's money I'm, I'm, I would rather save, uh, con especially considering that I'm right-handed. So I don't need that uh, ejection side changing over. Uh, something else to note, um, the uh, stock Action Army mags come with a built-in uh, silent fill valve, uh, which is basically just a fill valve with an O-ring at the bottom. And I found that on my Action Army mags that uh, if I dropped them enough or I was ejecting the mag enough and shooting, uh, the O-ring would actually fall out. And whilst that uh, was annoying, it wasn't necessarily detrimental. It just meant that when I was filling the mags, they would spit out gas more than I would like. And so far with my own hush rings, uh, I don't get that. So maybe it's an issue with their O-rings and there's a link to that down below. So now with all that said, I think we should uh, go and split the gun and see what's changed on the inside. Okay, so let's stay with the lower here. So the lower is actually very different, but only in this rear section. Uh, we talked about the trigger, which I changed here, and uh, that's all pretty within uh, the same route as uh, the original Action Army. Um, I also took out the safety for it to work with this lower, just another thing to know. Uh, I don't really see much point on the safety on the Action Army, it seemed uh, very useless. On the back here, however, I have changed quite a lot. So this uh, area here is where you're going to see the most wear on your Action Army pistol. I found that uh, my hammer broke after probably, I want to say about 5,000 rounds. There's actually a post on the hammer that holds in a rotor and it uh, snapped completely off. Um, and that meant that the hammer no longer worked and it had to be replaced. So I changed the hammer out for a cow cow steel hammer. And then I also um, altered the hammer to allow a uh, 8.5 millimeter bearing. And uh, what this bearing allows for uh, is just a sort of smoother function. Now, if we cock this, you'll see what I mean. So when this is cocked, uh, what would uh, usually be the case is you had this triangle shape and the bolt would ride over it. And it caused a little bit of resistance, nothing too crazy. However, with uh, this wheel, uh, the bearing, it just rolls over it very smoothly. So uh, that's why I moved to that. Now, next up, there are actually other steel components in this hammer assembly. Uh, when you buy the Cow Cow Steel Hammer set, it comes with a bunch of pieces you can replace, and that includes uh, the knocker here. And uh, these are worth installing too. All of these parts made out of steel will go a lot further. Uh, the one I haven't got made out of steel yet is this uh, disconnector here. And I actually have seen a friend's disconnector break, so uh, that is something I will have to replace after some time. I will say though that uh, mine has stayed in one piece for now, so it is existing to sort of the 7,000 round mark so far. Uh, there's a little bit of wear on top, but uh, it's not crumbling to pieces just yet. But it is something I do expect to happen, and I have seen happen with other people's guns. Sweet. Let's move on to the upper assembly of the AAP. So here we have the upper assembly of the Action Army, and we'll give a little flip and see what's on the inside. So if you own an AAP-01, you'll see that this does look quite different, and that's mainly because of this. So this is the Action Army hop-up unit that I installed. Uh, it's a little nifty thing they came out with, and when you turn every uh, little rotary piece here, it makes a nice satisfying click to know uh, how far you've adjusted. This also comes with a sort of like a hop-up arm, very similar to an AEG or a bolt action rifle. So you can actually put um, different nubs in this. Uh, this is something I've never actually seen before in a pistol where you could change the nub on a, a handgun. I know the Mark 23 has things like eye keys, but it's not really necessarily built for that. Uh, however, the hop-up chamber does require you to use a nub and they are similar to the ones you would find in sort of AEGs and VSR hop chambers. But I know a company called Stalker do actually make a nub for this hop chamber, and whilst I haven't installed it, it is something I do plan on buying. They do sell a version of this hop chamber which comes with a bucking and a inner barrel. I do not have that version, I am still rocking the stock inner barrel. However, I did change to a PDIW hold bucking. The stock bucking is very good. It gets a good range, but I find it's not be the most accurate bucking. 
So I changed to a PDIW hold, which is a bucking I find to be very accurate, and I'm getting really good results now. Uh, one thing I will say about this hop-up chamber that I don't like is it does require me to split it from the body to adjust. Uh, actually, I actually do have a spare AAP, I can talk about the other hop chamber. So on this AAP, what you would do to change the old hop-up was pull back the bolt, and in here there is a little wheel which you can adjust with your finger. And that's the way it is on traditional AAPs out the box. However, with this hop-up chamber, you have to split it from the body, and uh, whilst it's uh, nothing too crazy or too annoying, it's just another step, and uh, it does seem like a small step backwards. But uh, at the same time, you do get a really cool performance from this hop wheel, and it does feel a lot more precise than the stock chamber with this uh, clicky rotary action. So uh, no real complaints there. And next up, we're going to move to the blowback unit. Um, I am currently using my uh, little snap uh, nozzle spring um, that keeps some very strong retention between my uh, bucking and my nozzle. Um, so far I haven't uh, broken any of these nozzle springs yet and I don't think I've seen anyone else who has broken their own. Um, they're incredibly strong, very durable and they come in a flashy gold as well. Um, it's something that uh, I'm actually very proud of and I think it's probably one of our biggest selling products. Uh, it's excellent and uh, there will be another link for those down below. Next up we have our recoil spring, the Snappy Boy AOP01 recoil spring, and that just makes this build a lot snappier and uh, gives it a lot more oomph every time you pull the trigger. And this felt quite needed um, when I got the gun initially. It was quite cool but um, it felt a little bit sluggish and now it's a uh, a lot more crisp and we're definitely bumping up those uh, rounds per second numbers. And then to pair it off, we are also using our new short stroke kit. But this short stroke kit allows the bolt travel to be mitigated so it doesn't go to full travel. However, it still locks back on empty. Uh, so all this does really is it makes your gun shoot faster and there isn't really a consequence to it. You can still lock back. On my other AAP build, I also have short stroke except it's a lot further back. Um, this doesn't lock back on purpose. This is meant to be sort of a fun SMG build um, and it consequently shoots ridiculously quickly. That's just about it for the blowback chamber, but something worth noting is just here where the um, hammer will ride in your uh, BBU when it is pressed together, it will slowly sort of wear down this little hill here. I'll see if I can get even closer to it. You can just see the small amounts of wear there, uh, those little silvery sparks. Um, people who don't use the rotary bearing like I do, um, wear down this a lot quicker. Uh, I have a friend called Sam and I will put a picture on screen of what his uh, uh, BBU hill looks like with the uh, standard hammer. And as you can see, it is really wearing away. However, despite this, um, it's not caused him any issues. He's put a lot more rounds through his gun and uh, he uses it in a sort of full auto SMG style and he's not had a problem yet. Um, so uh, despite maybe not being completely durable, um, it looks like that part can last for quite a while before it needs replacing. However, if you're a bit like me and you use one of those uh, wheel bearings, uh, the wear is uh, much more reduced. So the big question is, uh, has it all been worth it? Originally when I bought the AAP-01, it was a measly 90 pounds. It was totally plastic bodied, yet it shot fantastically well. And the answer is yes, it is still worth it two years later. Even with some of the broken hammer parts and uh, deciding to change some things out to make it a bit more optimal, like the trigger and the hop chamber, it's absolutely been worth it. Um, this is one of the coolest handguns I've ever had the pleasure of working on. And as most people know, I'm a very big high cap and nerd, but this just hits different. I think it's just nice to have some variety in the sport and uh, it's nice to uh, have maybe a new contender in the meta pistol game. I'm looking forward to releasing new parts for this soon. Uh, something you should keep an eye on in our website. And uh, yeah, I would say two years later, it's still a good idea to buy an Action Army AAP-01. So thank you for watching. That's been today's video. Um, I'm really enjoying working with these pistols and talking to you all. 
if you want to see more of this type of content where I review guns way after they've come out so we can see if they stood the test of time, just hit subscribe. If you like this video, also leave a like and comment below. Has your Action Army pistol held up? Uh, would you say it's still worth the small £90 that you paid for it? Is there any other quirks that you think I haven't mentioned or should talk about? Do let me know. I do read the comments and I will be replying. And until that, I will see you next video.